Okay, so let's start. We want to start the topic called earnings per share. And so let me introduce this topic now. So the first thing to know is that there are various types of APS. There are various types of earnings per share. There are two types of earnings per share that we shall be calculating in this topic. And one of them is what we call the basic earnings per share what we call the normal basic earnings per share. The second type of earnings per share is what we call diluted earnings per share, diluted earnings per share. So those are the two types of earnings per share that we shall be dealing with in this topic. So let's start with the first one. How do you calculate? How do you calculate the earnings per share? How do you calculate the earnings per share. Now, this term called earnings per share is not a new term to you. You must have heard it before. You must have heard it before. What is earnings per share? The term itself is already telling you what is the earnings per share. That to get the earnings per share, you obviously should take the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders, you take the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders and you divide that by the number of shares to get what we are calling the earnings attributable, uh, to get the earnings per share, to get the earnings per share. You take the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders and you divide that by the number of shares. The only issue is, at this level, we don't just divide the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders by the number of shares. We divide by what we shall be calling the weighted average number of shares. We shall be dividing by what we call the weighted average number of shares. So in simple terms, therefore, we are saying that you take the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders, take the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders, and you divide that by the weighted average number of shares. Okay? So how do you determine the earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders? To get the earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders, we shall be taking the net profit after tax of that company. You take the net profit after tax of that company and you minus what we call preference dividend for that company. You minus what we call the preference dividend. Then that which you get when you take the net profit after tax and you minus preference dividend, that what you get is what we call the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders. It is those earnings that now we shall be dividing by what we call the weighted average, the weighted average number of ordinary shares. You divide that now by what we call the weighted average number of shares. Okay. So let me proceed from there now. Let me proceed from there now. Suppose, suppose you are given that the following is a section, is an extract of an income statement of a company. You are given their profit after tax as an amount of maybe 10 million. After that, from there, they have pref uh, dividends, one in form of preference, assuming to be 2 million. Another one they paid as dividend during the year is ordinary, amounting to 1 million. That means they now retained 7 million. They now retained 7 million. So this is what we are calling retained profit. That's what we are now calling retained profit. So from this company, if you look at the income statement of this company, this company has two types of shareholders. One are the ordinary shareholders and the second group of shareholders are the ones we are calling the preference shareholders. Listen, both of them are entitled to, both of them are entitled to the profit after tax. Listen, once you pay taxes out of the profit, the balance which we are calling the profit after tax normally should be the profit to be appropriated, to be appropriated among the partners, to be appropriated among the partners. But now we are saying, this company has 
among the shareholders, sorry, not the partners, among the shareholders, should be appropriated among the shareholders. But this company has two categories of shareholders, the preference shareholders and the ordinary shareholders. So we want to find out what is the earnings that are attributable to the ordinary shareholders. How much are the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders? I hope you also know this. I hope you also know this, that a company normally pays, or the preference shareholders, let's put it this way, preference shareholders normally get a fixed return every year. They normally get a fixed return every year. For example, if this company had a 10% preference share capital worth shillings 20 million, preference share capital preference share capital worth 20 million, then it means every year they should pay their shareholders a dividend of 2 million, a dividend of 2 million, which is 10% of the 20 million, 10% of the 20 million. So it does not matter how much profit your company made this year, no. It must pay every year. The preference shareholders must get a dividend of two million. The preference shareholders must get a dividend of two million. So even if next year we make a profit of 15 million and our share capital is still 20 million for the preference, then they would still get out of the 15 million, they would still get their two million. Now listen. For ordinary shareholders, they don't have to earn or they normally don't earn a fixed return every year. They normally don't earn a fixed return every year. No. Okay. For them, the company can pay them more dividend in a particular year or pay them no dividend at all out of their profit, out of their profit. Listen. So out of the 10 million profit after tax, 2 million is obviously... 2 million is obviously the profit that is attributable to the preference shareholders. Whether the company makes more profit or less profit, the profit out of the profit of the tax. In this case, the one attributable to ordinary sh uh, preference shareholders will be that that 2 million will be that 2 million, which automatically means the balance will be the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders, which in this case will be 8 million. So that 8 million is the one we are saying is the earnings that are attributable to the ordinary shareholders. It does not matter whether they were paid everything of the 8 million as dividend or they were paid nothing out of the 8 million as dividend. What are their earnings? This company, the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders are 8 million. But we can see they only paid 1 million. They only paid 1 million as dividend. The company retained for them an amount of 7 million. But how much are their earnings? How much are their earnings? The earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders are that amount we are getting as 8 million, as we are getting 8 million. So that is what you now take as your earnings. When you are computing now, when you are computing what we are calling the earnings per share, now you will take the 8 million, which is the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders. Now you divide that by the weighted average. You now divide that by the weighted average number of shares. And I hope you can see, to get that 8 million, we have taken the 10 million profit after tax, then we have subtracted the 2 million, which is the preference dividend, which is the preference dividend. And that leaves you now with the profit attributable to the ordinary shareholders. So I have explained how to deal with the numerator, how to deal with the numerator in the formula for getting the earnings per share, how to get the earnings per share. We have said you take the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders, you divide that by the weighted average number of shares. But to get the earnings that are, that are attributable to the ordinary shareholders, you take the net profit after tax and you less and you less preference dividends. For example, in this case, we have said the profit after tax is 10 million. How much of that is attributable to the preference shareholders? Because we said they normally earn a fixed return every year. So out of the 10 million, just remove what is attributable to the preference shareholders. 
because they normally earn a fixed return. What now you get, which in our case is 8 million, that 8 million now becomes the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders. I have said whether they have been paid everything of the 8 million as their dividend, that does not matter. Whether they have been paid nothing out of their 8 million, that does not matter. What is their earnings? Their earnings is 8 million. Now you divide that by what we are calling the weighted average number of shares. So now I am through with the discussion of the numerator, how to get the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders. Now we want to discuss the denominator. In other words, how do you determine the amount we are calling the weighted average number of shares, the weighted average number of shares, the weighted average number of shares so let me discuss that let me discuss how to compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares okay so for purpose of illustration let me first assume listen for purpose of illustration i want to assume that you as a company you began the year with two million shares and by the end of the year nothing had taken place by the end of the year nothing had taken place that affected the number of shares that affected the number of shares but for purpose of eps i want to assume your earnings were 10 million i want to assume your earnings were 10 million so you began the year with 2 million worth of shares during the year no sh change took place no change took place during the year that affects the number of shares and according to the question by the end of the year the earnings attributable to the earnings attributable to the ordinary i want to assume the earnings attributable to the ordinary shareholders were 10 million so in that case what would be your basic eps your basic eps will be 10 million divide that by 5 million uh, by 2 million sorry divide that by 2 million and therefore your basic eps would be 5 shillings per share 5 shillings per share so that is your basic eps you take the earnings which are 10 million you divide that by the number of shares which is 2 million you get an eps of five you get an eps of five now listen but now we want to bring in what if during the year what if during the year some transactions took place during the year that affects the number of shares that affects the number of shares for example assuming maybe you as a company maybe you as a company on 1st of july this year as a company on 1st july this year maybe you issued another 1 million shares you began the year with 2 million but as a company you issued another 1 million shares at full market price at full market price and at full market price and the shares were fully paid the shares were fully paid how do you compute now listen how do you compute what we call the weighted average number of shares so to compute the weighted average number of shares we only compute the weighted average number of shares if something took place during the year within your company which affects the number of shares which affects the number of shares so what can affect the number of shares one of them is where your company could have issued shares during the year where your company could have issued shares during the year and we are saying for example in this case at full market price listen let me use this for now as an illustration okay so if you began the year with 2 million shillings at 2 million shares and you issued another 1 million shares on 1st of July maybe the market price was 20 and they paid you 20 shillings all of it per share on 1st of July so you as a company it means you received 20 million shillings on 1st of July 
when you received 20 million shillings on 1st of July, you issued 1 million shares. You issued 1 million shares. Now, remember, this amount that you received from the shareholders on 1st of July only financed you as a company for six months. Only financed you for six months. That is from July to December. So we are now saying when it comes to giving the earnings to the shareholders, there is no way you can give them earnings on the 1 million shares for the whole year. There is no way you can give them the earnings on 1 million for the full year when, listen, yet, yet their money only financed you for six months, only financed you for six months. So we are now saying when these shares were issued on 1st of July, because the money financed you for six months, then this number of shares that were issued on 1st of July, they should be weighted. They should be weighted on time basis. That means you multiply that 1 million, you multiply that 1 million number of shares by what we call a time adjustment factor by what we call a time adjustment factor which is 6 over 12 and therefore in this case now in this case now we are saying your weighted average number of shares will be 2.5 million will be 2.5 million it is that 2.5 million now that you will use in the computation of the eps for that particular year so the point is this now, listen, the point is this, when shares are issued during the year at full market price and they are fully paid, when shares are issued at full market price during the year and they are fully paid, then we are saying those shares should be weighted on time basis. They should be weighted on time basis for the period they were outstanding during the year. For the period they were outstanding during the year. So if they were outstanding for six months, multiply that by six over 12. If they were outstanding for nine months, multiply that one million by nine over 12. Okay. So our concern for this area now is how to compute, how to compute the weighted average number of shares, how to compute the weighted average number of shares. Now listen, there are various circumstances or various factors that can affect, listen, there are various reasons that can change the number of shares. We began the year with 2 million, but there are various reasons why the weighted average number of shares or the number of shares may change. I have given you one reason when the number of shares can change. The following, we are saying, the following are some of the circumstances or some of the reasons why the number of shares may change. One, I have said when shares are issued at full market price and they are fully paid. Listen, yes, you began the year with 2 million. On 1st of July, you issued 1 million. So it is true that by the end of the year, your company in the register of shareholders, they have 3 million shares. It is true that by the end of the year, as per the register of shareholders, the number of shares are 3 million. But you don't take the earnings of 10 million, you divide that by 3 million. No. Why? Because we have said for this 1 million shares, their money did not finance you for the full year. Their money only financed you for six months. So that 1 million number of shares should be weighted on time basis. Listen now. So if the earnings, if the earnings were still 10 million, if the earnings are still 10 million in your company, now we are saying to get the earnings at uh, to get the earnings per share to get the earnings per share you now take the 10 million you divide that by what we have called the weighted average number of shares and we saw it is 2 million plus 1 million times 6 over 12 we saw the number of shares coming to be 2.5 million so you divide that by 2.5 million that now becomes an earnings per share of four shillings so that's how listen that's how you use shares issued at full market price and they are fully paid listen the key point there is that they must be they must be done what weighted they must be weighted on time basis okay listen now what if another time 
your company again issued 1 million shares at full market price yes at full market price but they are partly but partly paid for example your company could have issued 1 million shares at a market price of 20 fine but by the end of the year the shareholders had only paid you 15 the shareholders had only paid you 15 shillings they are yet to pay you another five which will come in the years to come but by end of this year you have only been paid 15 out of 20. so how do you again use that to compute the weighted average number of shares we shall discuss that in a short while another scenario what if again your company again during the year maybe on 1st of july your company issued another 1 million shares as bonus shares as bonus shares how do you use them to compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares we shall look at that again in a short while what if your company issued bonus shares how do we use them to compute the weighted average number of shares another circumstance we shall discuss again is what if your company issued another 1 million shares during the year again as a result of what we call a stock option as a result of what we call a stock option of course i know by now you know what are bonus shares of course bonus shares you know bonus shares are shares given to who bonus shares are shares given to who to existing shareholders free of charge bonus shares you know are shares given to existing shareholders free of charge i hope you know that what are stock options what are stock options we are saying shares were issued on 1st July, 1 million shares were issued on 1st July as a result of a stock option. What is a stock option? What is a stock option? What is a stock option? Okay, a stock option is a privilege. A stock option is a privilege given to who? It's a privilege given to employees of the company to do what? To buy shares at a price below the market price. For example, you issued 1 million shares when the market price was 20, but you gave your employees that privilege to buy them at 15, and they bought 1 million shares on 1st July. Listen, how do you use them again to compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares that's what we shall discuss in a short while when shares are issued as a result of a stock option how do you use them to compute the weighted average number of shares another circumstance what if again during the year your company issued another 1 million shares as a result of what we call a rights issue as a result of what we call a rights issue your company issued 1 million shares as a result of a rights issue first i hope you know again first i hope you know that a rights issue is another privilege a rights issue is a privilege but this time given to who it's a privilege given to who now given to who given to the existing shareholders again it's a privilege given to the existing shareholders to buy shares to buy extra shares at a price below the market price maybe the market price again was 20 but you as a company you gave the existing shareholders the privilege to buy them at 15 the privilege to buy them at 15 and by 1st of july they acquired those 15 are uh, those that 1 million those 1 million shares they acquired 1 million shares so the question is how do you use that 1 million to compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares again what if on 1st of july i'm assuming again your company issued 1 million shares as a result of what we call a share split 
as a result of what we call share split. Your company did a share split on 1st of July. And as a result of that share split, 1 million shares were issued. How do you use them to compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares? How do we use them to compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares that's what we want to discuss again in a short while that's what we shall discuss in a short while okay again what if on 1st of July what if on 1st of July your company issued another 1 million shares as a result of conversion as a result of conversion of preference shares or debentures into ordinary shares when your company many years ago issued preference shares they could have issued those preference shares as convertible preference shares or your company could have issued many years all the debentures which were issued as convertible debentures now a time has come and these guys want to exercise their right and convert suppose they converted their or debentures into ordinary or they converted their preference into ordinary how do you use them to compute what we call the weighted average number of shares how do you use them to compute the what we call the weighted average number of shares okay so these are various circumstances these are various circumstances under which a company so number one is where we are saying when shares are issued at full market price how do you use them number two when it's shares are issued at full market price but they are partly paid how do you use them number three how what about when shares are issued as a result of bonus how do you use them number four when shares are issued as a result of a stock option how do you use them number five when shares are issued as a result of a rights issue how do you use them to compute the weighted average number six when shares are issued as a result of a share split how do you use them to compute the weighted average number seven when shares are issued as a result of conversion how do you use them to compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares another one number eight what if again on 1st of July your company issued another 1 million shares as a result of listen as a result of a payment of the purchase consideration as a payment of purchase consideration as a payment of the purchase consideration in a business acquisition when you acquire another company or when you acquire a business you can pay them their purchase consideration by issuing shares you can pay them their purchase consideration by issuing shares so we want to ask ourselves how do you use them to compute when shares are issued as a payment of the purchase consideration how do you use them to compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares now listen each of these items have their own rules. Each of these items have their own rules on how to use them to compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares, to compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares. And that's what I want to discuss now. So let me go through each one of them, giving you the rules of each particular item, giving you the rules of each particular item, giving you the rules of each particular item. Of course, we have started when shares are issued at full market price and fully paid. What have we said? Your company began with 2 million shares. I have just assumed that. Your company began with 2 million. Then I have said on 1st of July, your company issued 1 million shares at a time when the market price was 20 and the company paid was paid 20 by end of, uh, they have already been paid the whole 20. So these shares were issued at full market price and they are fully paid and they are fully paid, okay? So how do we use them to compute? I have already said when shares are issued at full market price and they are fully paid, when shares are issued during the year at full market price and they are fully paid, I have said the only key issue to remember there is that those shares must be done what? They must be weighted on what? On time basis they must be weighted on time basis they must be weighted on time basis that's what I have said when shares are issued as a result of so sorry when shares are issued at full market price and they are fully paid where I have said you take your 2 million shares plus the number of shares you issued on 1st of July or whichever period during the year multiply that by what we called 
time adjustment factor. In our case, it will be 6 over 12, and therefore that becomes 2.5 million. That 2.5 million now becomes the denominator in the computation of the earnings per share. That becomes the denominator in the computation of the earnings per share. Okay. Now we go now to the second one. What if again some shares are issued at full market price and partly paid? When shares are issued at full market price but they are partly paid that's what i want to talk about shares issued at full market price but partly paid partly paid so i want you to listen to this carefully i want you to listen to this carefully again on first of january On 1st of January, we began again the year with 2 million shares. Come 1st July, your company issued 1 million shares at a market price of 20. But by end of the year, only 15 shillings had been paid. Only 15 shillings had been paid. In other words, they are issued at full market price, but they are partly paid. Now listen. It is obvious on 1st of July, on 1st of July, you as a company, you received a total of cash of how much? On 1st of July, you received a total cash of how much? You issued 1 million shares at a market price of 20, but only 15 has been paid. So at the date of the issue, you have only received, as at the date of the issue, you have only received, or that day when you issued, you only received 15 million shillings. Okay? Now listen. If, if this 15 million is to be used to buy shares in the stock market, then this shareholders will buy one share at 20 bob you as a company you have given them the privilege to buy slowly or to pay slowly but if they were to go to the open market they will buy the shares at 20 shillings it's true they are going to pay you 20 but you have given them the privilege to pay slowly but in the stock market they will not be required to pay slowly they will be required to pay everything in full listen now so it means, therefore, out of the 15 million shillings that you have received, you as a company, if they were to use their 15 million and go to the stock market, they would find one share being sold at 20 shillings. So it means their 15 million shillings is not enough to buy 1 million shares. Listen, it means there are 15 million is not enough to buy 1 million shares. It's enough to buy how many? Do that calculation. Do that calculation. When your company has received 15 million and the market price per share is 20 shillings, then it means that 15 million is enough to buy how many shares? It's enough to buy, that is 15 million divided by 20, that's enough to buy 750,000 shares. 750,000 shares. Are we together? Good. So the point is this now. Listen. It therefore means, listen, it therefore means that out of the 1 million shares that you have issued, you as a company, out of the 1 million, it is said that out of the 1 million, only 750,000 shares are considered to be fully paid. Only 750,000 are considered to be fully paid. Because we have said, you receive 15 million, the market price per share is 20. So if they were to buy shares at full market price, they can't buy 1 million shares with their 15 million. They can only buy 750,000. But you as a company, you have issued to them 1 million shares. So out of the 1 million, 
only 750,000 shares are considered to be fully paid. Listen now. So when I'm computing the weighted average number of shares, then out of the 1 million, listen, use only those shares. Use only those shares which are considered to be fully paid. To compute the weighted average number of shares, when shares are partly paid, listen, when shares are partly paid, we consider them, which one? The one million. We consider them only to the extent, only to the extent that they are fully paid, only to the extent that they are fully paid. And out of the one million, to what extent are they fully paid? It is 700 and what? 50. So to compute the weighted average, you will start with your 2 million shares by the beginning. Then you now add the 750,000 shares. Again, listen, again. Because the money came in on 1st of July, because the money came in on 1st of July, it is obvious you will tell your shareholders again, your money did not finance me for the full year, your money financed me only for how long? Six months. So on the 750,000 shares, they have to be again weighted on time basis, meaning you multiply that by 6 over 12. Okay? So I have said, the key point is, when shares are issued at full market price, listen, and they are partly paid, I have said, only consider them, only consider them to the extent, only consider them to the extent that they are fully paid. Okay, how do you determine the extent which they are fully paid? You divide the amount received, by, you divide the amount received by the market price per share. That will tell you how many of the 1 million are considered to be fully paid, which in this case is 750. Listen again. Whenever companies pay dividend, listen now, whenever companies pay dividend, they only pay dividend, they only pay dividend at the end of the year, they normally pay dividends to fully paid shares. Listen, partly paid shares holders, partly paid shareholders normally don't get a dividend at all. Partly paid shareholders don't normally get any dividend. It is only fully paid shareholders who normally get dividends. Listen. So another way to frame this scenario is to say this. How many of, listen, how many of the 1 million shares that you issued, how many of them will participate in dividend? It is only those that are considered to be fully paid. And how do you determine those which are fully paid? You take the 15 million and you divide that by the market price of 20, that gives you 750. So these 750 are the ones we can say are considered to be fully paid, or it is the ones we can say will participate in dividends. Listen. So in summary, therefore, I'm saying when shares are issued at full market price and they are partly paid, you consider them, that is out of the 1 million, you consider them only to the extent that they are fully paid. In other words, only to the extent that they will participate in dividend. Only to the extent that they will participate in dividend. So it is that 750. But then again, because the money came in July, that again means that that amount did not finance you as a company for the full year. That money financed you only for six months. So we are saying those shares again should be weighted. Those shares should be weighted on time basis. If we issued them at the beginning of the year, that is 1st January, and by the end of the year they have only paid me seven, uh, 15, then out of the 1 million still, it will be 750, but now you don't multiply that by 6 over 12. Why? Because the money came in January. The money came in January. 
if the money came in October, 1st October, then it must have financed you in October, November, and December. You multiply that by 3 over 12. So for purpose of earnings, what would be the weighted average? It would be 2 million plus the 375. So for purpose of earnings per share, you will use that 2375. You would use 2375. So I have discussed the second item that can affect the computation of what we are calling the weighted average number of what? Number of shares. Number one, when shares are issued at full market price, that one I said, there was only one point. They must be weighted on time basis. Number two, now we are discussing when shares are issued at full market price and they are partly paid, but they are partly paid. We have said, consider them, the one million shares, consider them, only to the extent that they are fully paid. Only to the extent that they are fully paid. In other words, only to the extent that they will participate in dividend. Only to the extent that they will participate in dividend. So find out. You take the amount received, divide that by the market price, that will give you the number of shares considered to be fully paid. Then I've said if the money came in between the year, then apply a time adjustment factor apply a time adjustment factor so that's all for that now we can go to the third item now and that's when shares are issued as what bonus shares when shares are issued as bonus shares so let me discuss that again let me discuss that again we want to assume again you began the year with another two million shares Come first July this year, your company issued another 1 million shares as a result of bonus shares, okay, or as a way of bonus. I say, everybody by now should be able to know what are bonus shares. I said, bonus shares are extra shares, extra shares given to who? To existing shareholders, how? free of charge given to existing shareholders free of charge now listen so when i'm computing the weighted average number of shares i'll take the two million shares that were there by the beginning plus that one million listen now this time i cannot listen to this this time i cannot multiply that one million by six over twelve why because I can't tell my shareholders that your money financed me for six months new. Remember, we gave them for free. Okay? So we are saying, listen, we are saying when shares are issued as bonus, listen, when shares are issued as bonus, listen, they are not weighted. They are not weighted on time basis. They are not weighted on time basis basis why because you can't tell the shareholders that their money financed me for six months no the shareholders were given shares free free of charge meaning listen listen now meaning we normally say when a company issues bonus shares those shares are assumed now listen they are assumed to be issued at the beginning of the year they are normally assumed to be issued at the beginning of the year they are normally assumed to be issued at the beginning of the year that's why we are not multiplying them by 6 over 12 why because they are assumed to have been issued at the beginning of the year okay when shares are issued as what bonus the key point we have said is that they are not, not done what they are not weighted they are not weighted on time basis why because they are assumed to have been issued when at the beginning of the year so for purpose of eps for this current year you will use number of shares as how many three million okay so if your earnings were 10 million you will now divide that 10 million by three that will give you earnings per share this year of something like 3.3 it will give you earnings per share of 3.3. Another key important point I want to discuss, another key important point I want to discuss is this. When shares are issued, listen, when shares are issued as bonus, I have said they are assumed 
to have been issued when? They are assumed to have been issued when? At the beginning of the year. Now, listen. It therefore is required by the International Accounting Standard number 33, IS number 33 for EPS, IS number 33 for EPS, now requires, listen, that the EPS of the previous year, the earnings per share of your previous year, whichever the previous year it was, those earnings or that amount of the earnings per share should be restated. Get the point? The EPS of the previous year should be restated. For what purpose? For comparison purposes. Listen. So for now, let us assume that the earnings last year were 8 million. The earnings last year were 8. Last year, the number of shares were 2 million. So your EPS for last year was 4 shillings. That was your earnings per share last year. Come this year, 1st July, you issued another 1 million shares as bonus. Then we have said, those shares are assumed to have been issued at the beginning of the year. And therefore, we are saying, and therefore, the EPS of the previous year should be restated for comparison purposes. Should be restated for comparison purposes. Purposes. So the question is, how do you restate the EPS of the previous years? Listen now, to get what we are calling the restated EPS, to get what we are calling the restated EPS, you will take the earnings last year, which are 8 million, divide that by the number, listen, divide that by the number of shares last year, which is 2 million, plus, plus the bonus element in the current year plus the bonus element in the current year why because this 1 million shillings is as 1 million shares sorry this 1 million shares are assumed to have been issued at the beginning and therefore if they were issued at the beginning then last year the number of shares should have been 3 million so you divide that by 3 million shillings you divide that by 3 million shares so what would be the earnings per share for purpose of restating we take 8 divided by 3, you get something like 2.67, 2.67. Now listen, why are we restating the EPS of the previous year? For comparison purposes. This year, our EPS is 3.3. How did we get it? Our earnings were 10 million. Our wage average number of shares was 3 million. How did we get the 3 million? We took the 2 million, number of shares that we began with, plus the bonus of the current year, and I've said they are not weighted. So the weighted average number of shares came to how much? 3 million. So you took 10 million earnings this year, you divided by the weighted average number of shares this year, 3 million, you got an EPS of 3.3 this year. But because the bonus is assumed to have been issued at the beginning then the eps of the previous year should be restated for comparison purposes and we have restated it and we have got it as 2.67 i've explained how to restate it you take the earnings in the previous year you divide that by the number of shares in the previous year plus plus the bonus share element in the current year plus the bonus share element in the current year, which is 1 million. Sour, sour. That's what we have said. Now, suppose then you are told to comment because some questions tell you restate the EPS of the previous year and comment. Last year now, for purpose of comparison, our EPS for last year is 2.6. While this year, the EPS is 3.3. So which year did we as a company perform better? It is obvious it is in the current year. So you can say that the performance of the company has improved. Because for comparison purposes, last year the EPS, the restated one is 2.6. But the EPS for this current year is 3.3. So there is obviously an improvement in the performance of the company. You can even say the welfare of shareholders has improved. Why? Because it is the earnings per share belonging to them. How much are they entitled to? Last 
year they are entitled 2.6 this year they are entitled to earnings of 3.3 so their welfare has improved or you can even say the performance of the company has improved so now listen as i summarize number three item the bonus what have we said when shares are issued as bonus what's the key point what's the key point they are not weighted on what on time basis don't multiply them by six over twelve nine over twelve no they are not weighted on time basis we have said why are they not weighted on time basis because they are assumed to have been issued when at the beginning of the year they are assumed to have been issued at the beginning of the year that's number one point point number two for bonus we have said that the eps of the previous year should be restated for comparison purposes that's what we have said that for comparison purposes the eps of the previous year should be restated how we have said by dividing the earnings of the previous year by dividing the earnings of the previous year by the number of shares in the previous year plus plus what plus the bonus share element plus the bonus share element in the current year plus the bonus share element in the current year so last year the number of shares were two million our bonus shares were one million this year so if the bonus shares are assumed to have been issued at the beginning then they are assumed to have been there at the end of last year which will now make the number of shares last year to be three million and therefore take the earnings last year eight million in our illustration divide by three million that gives you a restated eps of 2.6 shillings okay so now i am through with the third item that can affect the computation of the weighted average number of what shares okay now we want to go to the next one that is number four and our number four item is when shares are issued as a result of what stock option when shares are issued as a result of a stock option how do you use them to compute what we call the weighted average number of shares how do we use them to compute what we call the weighted average number of shares okay again let me assume that you as a company you began with two million shares come first july your company issued one million shares we have said stock option is a what it's a privilege it is a what a privilege to who to the employees to do what to buy shares at a price below what below the market price it's a privilege given to employees to buy shares at a price below the market price so let us assume that the market price was 20 and they were given the privilege of buying them at 15 and they bought okay so how do you use the uh, the stock option to compute what we are now calling again the weighted average number of shares listen now these sh employees listen to this these employees brought how much to the company on first july these employees brought to us how much in total it is obvious they brought to the company they brought to the company a total amount of how much 15 million which is 1 million times the price per share they were given the privilege of buying them at 15 so they bought 1 million shares by paying 15 for each so they brought to the company 15 million listen when they brought in 15 million to the company listen we as a company we gave them we as a company we gave them the 1 million shares but but had the employees used their 15 million listen to this had the employees used the 15 million to go to the stock market and buy shares using the 15 million they will buy one share at how much in the stock market they would buy one share at how much at 20 shillings okay so it means therefore this 15 million they gave us 
was not enough to buy 1 million shares. It's enough to buy how many shares? If the employees were to use their 1 million, or their 15 million, and go to the stock market, they would find one share being sold for 20 shillings. Okay? Meaning, with their 15 million, they can't buy 1 million shares in the stock market. They can only buy how many shares? They can only buy how many shares? Only how much? 750,000 shares. Listen now. Listen carefully. But you remember, I have said, they brought in 15 million to the company. They brought in 15 million to the company and we gave them how many shares? We gave them how many shares? We gave them 1 million shares. Okay? Meaning, therefore, listen carefully now. Meaning, therefore, it is as if, it is as if, out of the 1 million shares you gave them, it is as if some of them were issued to the employees at how? At full market price. And it is as if some of the 1 million shares were given to the employees for free. That means as bonus shares. Listen. So when companies issue shares as a result of a stock option, as a result of a stock option, listen now, some of those shares, some of the 1 million shares are normally deemed, some of the 1 million shares are deemed to be issued at full market price, and some of them are deemed to be given for free as bonus shares. So first thing you do when shares are issued as a result of a stock option, listen, the first thing you do is to split how many of the 1 million shares are deemed to be issued at full market price and how many of the 1 million shares are deemed to be issued as bonus. Listen, to get the number of shares deemed to be issued at full market price, you take the amount received from the stock option, which is 15 million, you divide that by the market price per share. You divide that by the market price per share, which is 20. So out of the 1 million, listen, 750,000 shares are deemed to be issued as at full market price. Therefore, it means the balance of 250,000 shares are going to be considered, listen, are going to be considered as given as bonus. They are going to be considered as bonus shares. So whenever companies issue shares to the employees as a result of a stock option, then it is required you split the number of shares issued between how many are deemed to be issued at full market price and how many are deemed to be issued as bonus. Listen, once you separate the two components, now you can use them to compute the weighted average number of shares. Don't forget, we started with 2 million shares. Then during the year, we issued 1 million, out of which 750 were deemed to be issued at full, at full market price. Listen, but don't forget, again, the money that they brought in on 1st July, the money they brought in on 1st July did not finance me for the full year. Again, it only financed us for six months. Listen, therefore we are saying, those shares deemed to be issued at full market price, they must be weighted again on time basis. They must be weighted on time basis, which in our case will be 6 over 12. Because their money, which is 15 million, they did, that money did not finance me for the full year. It only financed me for 6 months. So I multiply that 750 by 6 over 12. Then I add the bonus element. And the bonus element we have seen as 250. And I've already told you when shares are issued as bonus, what did we say? When shares are issued as bonus, what did we say? What was the rule? When shares were issued as bonus, what did we say? It is obvious we said when shares are issued as bonus shares, they are not done what? They are not weighted. I hope you remember. They are not done what? They are not weighted on time basis. Sour, sour. Good.
So you don't multiply the 250 by 6 over 12. So for purpose of earnings, what will be the weighted average? It will be 2 million plus 375 plus 250. That looks like 26, 25, 26, 25. So whatever are the earnings for the current year, which in our company we are keeping, assuming the earnings were 10 million, you take that 10 million, you divide by 2.625 million shares. You take the 10 million, you divide that by 2,625,000. So that comes to how much? That would be 10 million divided by 2.625. That gives me an EPS of something like 3.81, 3.81. Listen, listen, you remember when we were talking about bonus shares, we said they are not weighted. They are not weighted. We said they are assumed to be issued when? Bonus shares, we said they are assumed to be issued when? At the beginning of? the year we said they are assumed to be issued at the beginning of the year then i told you when we were dealing with bonus i said because they are assumed to be issued at the beginning of the year the eps of the previous year the eps of the previous year should also be done what be restated listen the eps of the previous year should be restated how you now go take the earnings last year, which we were assuming to be 8 million. Divide that now by, listen, divide that by the number of shares last year, 2 million. Plus, listen, now you don't add plus 1 million that were issued this year. No. 750 of the 1 million was issued at full market price, not at the beginning. It is the bonus out of the 1 million that are assumed to be issued at the beginning listen so you take the one me are the two million shares that were there by the end of last year plus plus the bonus share element plus the bonus share element in the current year plus the bonus share element in the current year which is 250 which is in our case 0 0.25 that will come to 8 million you divide that by 2 million 250 2 million 250 so what does it come to when we now compute what we are calling the restated eps our restated eps now becomes our restated eps now becomes 3.56 3.56 for purpose of comparison good so i'm hoping you're following i'm hoping you're following what are the key issues when it comes to stock options what are the key issues? We have said when shares are issued as a result of a stock option, some of those shares are deemed to be issued how? At full market price, and some are deemed to be issued how? As bonus. So, mm. then point number two to Mesema, to determine the number of shares deemed to be issued at full market price, listen, we have said you divide the amount received from the stock option, which was how much? 15 in our case, you divide that by the market price per share. That will give you the number of shares deemed to be issued at full market price. Then we have said, out of the 1 million, if you remove the ones deemed to be issued at full market price, then that leaves you with the balance to be those considered as given as bonus. Okay? Then we say the other point was, if the shares are issued at full market price, you know, and we have said before, they must be weighted on time basis. That's why we multiply the six fifteen or uh, the seven fifteen by six over twelve. Then we have also said, and we have said this before, when bonus, when shares are issued as bonus, we say they are not weighted. They are not weighted on time basis. So we did not multiply the 215 by a factor nu. Why? Because bonus are assumed to be issued when? At the beginning of the year. That is what we are saying. Once we were through with that, I said 
IS number 33 requires that the EPS also of the previous year should be restated for comparison purposes. How? By taking the earnings of the previous year, divide them by the number of shares in the previous year plus, plus the bonus share element plus the bonus share element in the current year plus the bonus share element in the current year. That's what we are assuming to 50 in our illustration. That is what we are getting. Okay. So I am now through with the third item or with the fourth one, sorry, with the fourth one when shares are issued as a result of a stock option. So far we have covered shares issued at full market price when shares are issued as partly paid. We have discussed when shares are issued as bonus. Now we are discussing shares issued as a result of a stock option. Okay. So we want to go to the fifth item that can affect the number of shares. What is it that can affect the number of shares during the year? And the fifth one is when shares are issued as a result of what we call as a result of what we are calling the rights issue as a result of what we call rights issue. What did we say rights issue are? I told you a rights issue occur when? We said when does a rights issue occur? When, SN, when existing shareholders, existing shareholders are given the privilege to buy shares how? At a price below what? below the market price, at a price below the market price. So let us again assume that your company began the year with 2 million shares again. Then come 1st July, your company issued another 1 million shares to the existing shareholders as a result of a rights issue. The market price is 20, but they were given the privilege of buying them at 15. And they bought. So how, again, do you compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares? How do you compute the weighted average number of shares when shares are issued as a result of a rights issue? When shares are issued as a result of a rights issue, how do you compute what we are calling the weighted average? Now listen. Again, when shares are issued, as a result of a rights issue, that 1 million shares. Again, some of those shares are deemed to be issued at full market price, and some of them will be deemed to be issued as bonus shares, as bonus shares. So we want to find out how do you determine how many of the 1 million shares that were issued in July, how many of them are deemed to be issued at full market price, and how many again are deemed to be issued as bonus? I want you to be very careful for this one now. I want you to be very careful for this one because the way to separate how many of the 1 million are deemed to be issued at full market price and how many are deemed to be issued as bonus, listen, the way to separate them is not the same way as when bonus were, shares were issued as a result of a stock option. No, the procedure is different. That's what I want you to listen carefully. How to separate out of the 1 million, how many of them are deemed to be issued at full market price and how many are deemed to be issued as bonus? Good. Now listen. Listen now. To get how many of them, listen to this, to get how many shares out of the 1 million, to get how many shares out of the 1 million were deemed to be issued at full market price, listen, by the beginning of the year, your company began with 2 million shares. Listen, on 1st July, 1 more million, 1 million shares were issued to the public. Remember, these are existing shareholders who are buying, who have been given the privilege of buying 1 million shares on 1st of July at a price below the market price. The market price was 20, but they are now being given the privilege of buying at 15. Listen carefully. We began the year with 2 million. When the market price is 20, come 1st July, 
our company issued more shares to the existing shareholders. These are shares that are trading within the market. Listen, therefore, when you as a company you issued another 1 million shares, it means that you as a company, you must have increased supply of shares in the market. Our price was 20 before the 1 million shares were issued. You are now increasing supply of the shares in the market by giving shareholders more shares. So there will be an increase of supply of shares in the market. Listen, from the law of demand and supply, you know when there's an increase in supply, how does it affect price? When there's an increase in supply of a commodity, how does it affect price? It's obvious the price reduces. Now listen. So it means the same thing. That when your company issued another 1 million shares into the market, from 1st July onwards now, from 1st July onwards, we expect the market price of this company to reduce from 20 to a certain number or to a certain market price. We expect the market price to come down to whatever it will be. Listen, that price that is expected, that price that is expected to prevail after the rights issue, that price is what we shall be calling, that price is what we shall be calling the theoretical the theoretical x right price the theoretical x right price the price that is expected the price that is expected to prevail after first of july in the market that price is called the theoretical x right price so for me to separate out of the 1 million, how many are deemed to be issued at full market price and how many are deemed to be issued as bonus, listen, first calculate, first calculate the theoretical x right price. How do you do it? Let me explain first. Now, to calculate the theoretical x right price, let me use a table here, number of shares. We have the price and we have what we call market capitalization of your company. Market capitalization. Listen, before the rights issue, before rights, your company had 2 million shares. At a time when the market price was 20. Listen, so it means the market capitalization of your company before the rights issue was how much? Your company had 2 million shares. One share in the market was going for 20. So what was the market capitalization of your company? It must have been 14 million. Good. Then during the year, your company gave more shares as a result of a rights issue. They issued another how many? 1 million shares at a price of how much? 15. So it means the market capitalization of your company went up by another how much? By another 15 million. So it means after the rights issue, 3 million shares will be in the market, floating somewhere in the market, and those 3 million shares will be fetching a market capitalization of 55 million. Will be fetching a market capitalization of 5 million. Good. So to compute the theoretical x right price, to compute that price we are calling theoretical x right price, you will take the market capitalization of the company after the rights issue, which is 55 million. You divide that now by the number of shares after the rights issue, which is 3 million. 
you determine, listen, you determine the market at the theoretical excite price by dividing the market capitalization of the company after the rise issue by, by the number of shares, by the number of shares after the rights issue by the number of shares after the rights issue by the number of shares after the rights issue so that comes to like how much what is 55 million divide that by 3 million that comes to something like 18.3 18.3 good now listen once you get that 18.3 then you say this on 1st july when the, employ the existing shareholders were buying the shares, they bought 1 million shares at 15 shillings. We gave them the privilege to buy 1 million shares at 15. So they brought in 15 million to the company. Listen, if they brought in 15 million to the company, at a time when we expect, at a time when we expect the market price of the shares to be how much? 18.3 then it means then it means if they were to use their 15 million shares as shillings to go to the stock market they would find the price now being 18.3 their 15 million will not be enough to buy 1 million shares no their 15 million will be enough to buy how many shares let's compute it is 15m Divide that by 18.3. That looks like 819.672 to the nearest whole number. Listen now. So it is 819 million, uh, 819,000. It is 819,672 are the shares that are deemed to be issued at full market price. So it means, therefore, out of the 1 million, those issued at full market price will be 819,672, but the ones issued as bonus now will be what? The minus now that from 1 million, that gives me 180, 2, no, not 2, 180, 3, 27, 28 to the nearest whole number, 328. Listen, so that's how we separate. That's how we separate how many of the 1 million shares are deemed to be issued as at full market price and how many are deemed to be issued as bonus and how many are deemed to be issued as bonus. Listen now. Listen to Mesema. To separate, to Mesema, to separate, first calculate what? A price called what? Theoretical X right price. We have said first calculate a price called what? Theoretical X right price. How do you get it? By dividing the market capitalization of your company after the right issue by the number of shares after the rights issue that which we get in our case we got it as 18.3 that becomes the theoretical x right price the price that is expected to prevail after the rights issue the price that is expected to prevail after the rights issue so so good now once you get that price that is expected Take the amount received from this rights issue, take the amount received from the rights issue, which is 15 million, divide that now by the expected market price, which is 18.3. That now gives you the number of shares deemed to be issued at full market price out of the 1 million. The balance, which is 180, 328, becomes the number of shares deemed to be issued as bonus. Listen now. Once you separate that way, now you can compute the weighted average number of shares. Take the 2 million shares that were there by the beginning, plus 
The number of shares deemed to be issued at full market price, 819, 697, 672. Multiply that again. Don't forget, the rule says when shares are issued at full market price, they must be weighted. That was the rule. So you multiply this by 6 over 12. Remember the money came in July. Okay. Then you now add the bonus, which is 180, 328. Those are the bonus shares. And of course, you know, we have said bonus shares are never weighted. Bonus shares are never weighted. Sour. So that's how you compute what we are calling, listen, that's how you compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares. So I am hoping you have seen the difference, listen, I am hoping you have seen the difference between how to compute the weighted average number of shares when it is how to separate, sorry, the number of shares out of the 1 million, how to separate them when it's a stock option and when it is a rights issue. The process is different. But once you separate, the process now almost becomes the same. For stock option, I hope you remember, we took the 15 million, we divided that by 20, the market price. That gave us 750, that became the number of shares deemed to be issued at, at full market price. Then the balance of 250 was bonus. For this right issue, we are saying, for you to get out of the 1 million, how many are deemed to be issued at full market price? First, calculate what? The theoretical X right price. That is the price that is expected to prevail after the rights issue. Once you compute it, you take the amount received from the rights issue, which was 15 million, divide that by the market price, which is 18.3. That gives you the number of shares deemed to be issued at full market price. The difference now becomes the ones issued as bonus. Listen now, we move on. Again, when shares are issued as a result of a stock option, you remember we restated the EPS of last year. Same again, when shares are issued as a result of a rights issue, they must also, the company must restate the EPS of the previous year. The company must restate the EPS of the previous year. But the question now is, how do we restate the EPS of the previous year? Now, listen carefully now. Last year, we had earnings of 8 million. Our number of shares last year, you know, were 2 million. So our EPS last year was 4 shillings. Now we are saying the EPS of the previous year should be restated. Now listen carefully. How do you restate? How do you restate the EPS of the previous year? Listen. To restate the EPS of the previous year, to restate the EPS of the previous year, you don't restate it the same way like if it was a stock option. <laughs> no. To restate the EPS of the previous year, you don't do that. Listen now. To get the restated, restated EPS, you take the earnings per share last year, which is 4, you take the EPS of last year, now you multiply that by, listen, you multiply that by a factor. You multiply that by a factor. To restate the EPS of the previous year, you take the EPS of the previous year, you multiply it by a factor. What is that factor? The factor is you divide and multiply that by the theoretical, theoretical X right price. You divide that by, you divide that by what we call the actual come right price the actual come right price that's what we are saying to restate the eps of the previous year you take the eps of last year multiply it by a factor which is theoretical x right price you divide that by the actual come right price in our case the eps of last year was four our theoretical x right price was 18.3, but the actual come right price was 20. The actual come right price was 20. So that's what we do 
when it comes to stock options na rights issue stock options we took the earnings last year we divided by the number of shares last year plus the bonus in the current year but now we are saying for rights issue you take the eps of last year itself you multiply it by a factor which is the theoretical x right price you divide that by the actual come right price okay so that's all concerning rights issue i hope you have understood it we now go to other factors that can change the number of shares so far we have discussed those five now we want to go to number six and that is what we were calling share split share split that means in your company you began the year with two million but come first july listen come first july your company did a share split your company did a share split everybody by now should know what a share split is when your company makes their shares to be splitted in whatever ratio for example your company did a share split by issuing two shares by issuing two shares for everyone they did a share split in the ratio of two for everyone in other words the company issued two shares for everyone you began the year with two million shares come first july your company did a share split in the ratio of two for everyone in other words as a shareholder when you had one share when you had one share before july that one share was splitted into how many two so after july you as a shareholder now you have two shares when you had one before now you have two so that is what we are calling a share split in what ratio two for every one listen now so it means therefore from july onwards our companies register will reflect a total of how many shares four million we had two million we split them in july in the ratio of two for everyone in other words we doubled the shares we doubled the shares that automatically tells you listen now that automatically tells you that on first july your company must have issued another how many you had two million shares up to end of june come july now moving forward our company will have four million so it means the company issued another how many two million shares on first july listen your company issued another two million on first july so two million shares were issued as a result of a share split what are the rules that's what i want to talk about now first july your company issued two million shares you did a share split in the ratio of two for everyone in other words you doubled your shares on first of july we doubled our shares on first of what july okay now listen so your company issued two million shares on first july i have said i have said remember these shares were issued but the shareholders were not told to bring in any cash no on first july the shareholders were not told to bring in any cash no on first july the company did a share split they went to the register split the shares in the ratio of two for every one so the company gave another two million shares on first of july so that the company now has four million so the point is this that these shares of two million were given to the existing shareholders for free because they were not told to bring any money the company just did a share split in other words they are considered to be given as what as bonus shares of course by now everybody should know the rule everybody should know the rule of bonus shares what is the rule they are not weighted 
Of course, you know that they are not weighted. Why are they not weighted? Because they are assumed to be issued when? They are assumed to be issued at the beginning of the year. They are assumed to be issued at the beginning of the year. Sour, sour. Good. So when you are assumed to be issued at the beginning, therefore your weighted average number of shares will be 2 million plus the 2 million that you issued on 1st July, therefore your weighted average number of shares will be 4 million. They are not weighted. They are not weighted. Sour. Now, just like bonus, listen, just like bonus, again, the EPS of the previous year should be restated. The EPS of the previous year should be restated. Because that 2 million shares that was issued on 1st July, again, they are assumed to be issued at the beginning. At the beginning so you take the earnings last year which we were assuming to be 8 million now divide that by the number of shares last year again which are 2 million plus the bonus element in the current year plus the bonus element in the current year which is another 2 million that means now you divide that by 4 million to get what we are calling the restated EPS to get what we are calling the restated EPS, you take the earnings last year, you divide that by the number of shares last year, you divide that by the number of shares last year, plus the bonus share element in the current, in the current year, in the current year. Good. Now, before we leave this area of the share split, listen to this now. We have agreed that our company began with 2 million shares. Listen, let us assume that one share had a power value of 10 shillings. So it means our company had a share capital of five uh, 20 million. Our company had a share capital of 20 million. Listen, come 1st July, your company did a share split. And from that day, we have agreed the shares were now how many? 4 million. Now listen carefully. When a company does a share split, listen, the share capital amount of the company, the amount of share capital normally doesn't change. The amount of the share capital doesn't change. No. The share capital of the company will still remain 20 million. What only changes is the number of shares. Listen to this now. So if the capital of the company will still remain 20 million, then what does it imply? It implies that yes, we have 4 million shares from now on, but one share now in this company will no longer be of 10 shillings. It will be of how much per share now? What will be the power value per share? after 1st of July. One share will have a power value of how much? It is obvious one share will have a power value of 5. So what am I trying to imply? Listen, what am I trying to imply? We are trying to imply by saying when there is a share split, listen, when there is a share split, more shares are issued. Listen to this now. More shares are issued, but but of a lower, but of a lower power value. More shares are issued, but of a lower, lower power value. So when a company has a share split, more shares, yes, they are issued, but of a lower power value because the capital does not change. The capital does not change. But the key issues I want you to get there is this. The key issue we have said is this. When there is a share split, those shares issued as a result of a share split, they are not weighted on time basis. Because they are assumed to be issued at the beginning. At the beginning. Point number two we have said, the EPS of the previous year should also be restated. How? By dividing the earnings of the previous year by what? By the number of shares in the previous year plus, plus the bonus element 
in the current year plus the bonus element in the current year then i've said when does a share split occur a share split occurs where more shares are issued where more shares are issued but of a lower but of a lower power value of a lower power value that's what we have said okay so that's all for that that's all for that we are through now with the share split now we go to the next item and the next one is when shares are issued on conversion of preference shares stroke debentures when shares are issued on conversion of preference shares or debentures into ordinary shares listen again on 1st july on 1st january we began the year with 2 million shares come 1st july this year some of the debenture holders whom we had issued debentures many years ago and we promised them that time those many years ago any time you want to convert your debentures into ordinary we shall give you the privilege and we shall give you 1 million shares so come july this year our debenture holders or our preference shareholders decided to exercise that right and on 1st of july we issued another 1 million shares on conversion remember these guys were debenture holders, debenture holders, or preference shareholders, preference shareholders, up to 30th of June, they were still our preference shareholders, or they were still our debenture holders. Come July, they exercised the right and converted. Maybe the agreement was, we shall give them 1 million shares. So we gave them 1 million shares on 1st of July now listen so how do we use that 1 million shares to compute what we are calling the weighted average number of shares listen before they converted it is obvious they were getting a return on their investment if it's debenture holders they were earning already interest on debentures if they are preference shareholders they were already earning preference dividend so if these guys convert on 1st July, they will only be my shareholders in terms of ordinary shareholders for only six months. They will only be my shareholders for only six months. So we obviously shall have to give them earnings, not for the whole year, but for six months. After all, they were already earning before in terms of preference dividends or in terms of debenture interest up to june they were already earning their return so come july they converted so the key point and the only key point the key point and the only one is when shares are issued on conversion when shares are issued on conversion they must be weighted so you must take two million plus the one million shares multiply that by six over 12 why because they will be your shareholders for only six months they will be your shareholders for only six months so they must be weighted on time basis they must be weighted on time basis so the only key point to remember there is when shares are issued as a result of conversion they must be weighted on time basis on time basis okay that is it so i'm now through i am now through with how to with how to compute the weighted average number of shares when shares are issued on conversion when shares are issued on conversion sour that's all we now go to the last part we now go to the last part the last item you remember was when shares are issued as a result of how when shares are issued as a payment as a payment of what as a payment of purchase consideration as a payment of the purchase consideration in a business acquisition in a business acquisition okay again you as a company you began the year with 2 million shares come 1st July listen now 
come first July, you acquired, you acquired another company. Call it like a subsidiary. You acquired a subsidiary, come first July. You agreed as part of the payment of the purchase consideration, you agreed you will issue 1 million shares. Remember, I've said 1st July is the date you acquired that business or that subsidiary. Let's call it a subsidiary. You agreed as part of the payment of the purchase consideration, you will issue 1 million shares as a payment of the purchase consideration. Those shares were issued on 1st September. Those shares were issued on 1st September. So the question is this now. When I'm computing the weighted average number of shares, yes, I'll take the one, uh, the 2 million shares plus the 1 million shares that were issued. But the question is this. Will I multiply that 1 million shares by 6 over 12, that is from July, or will I multiply that by 4 over 12, which is September, October, November, and December, four months? We should wait them for how long? That's the question. Listen now. You acquired your subsidiary on 1st of July. It is obvious. When you will be consolidating with your subsidiary, you will consolidate with them as from the date of acquisition, not on the date you paid your debt. You will consolidate with your subsidiary as from the date of acquisition, which is July, not the date you are paying your debt. You owe them whatever you owe them. When you are paying, that is not the issue. It is when did you acquire this subsidiary. So I'm saying this because you may be told by a question, we acquired a subsidiary in July, but the shares were issued in September. So when do we consider them to have been issued? You consider them to have been issued as from the date of acquisition. You will check the date of acquisition, not the date of the issue. Not the date of the issue, but the date of acquisition. So you will multiply that 1,000 or 1 million shares by 6 over 12. So the point I'm trying to say is this. When shares are issued as a payment of the purchase consideration in a business acquisition, we are saying they are considered, they are considered as from, they are considered as from the date of acquisition and not from the date of the issue. From the date of acquisition and not from the date of the issue. The reason being is that even the acquired entities results, the reason being that even the entities, the acquired entities results will be consolidated from the date of acquisition, will be consolidated from the date of acquisition. That's the reason why we are multiplying that by 6 over 12, because even the acquired entities results will be consolidated from the date of acquisition, not from the date of the issue. Okay? Good. So now we come to the end of the factors that might affect the calculation of the weighted average number of shares. One, we started with shares issued at full market price and fully paid. We said there is only one key point. They must be done what? Weighted. Number two, when shares are issued at full market price and they are partly paid. When shares are issued at full market price and they are partly paid. What did we say? We said you consider them only to the extent that they have been done what? They are fully paid. Only to the extent that they are fully paid. In other words, only to the extent that they will participate in dividend. We assumed that we issued 1 million shares in July at a market price of 20, but come the end of the year, they had only paid me 15. So that 15 million they have received, divide that by the market price, which is 20, that gives you 750,000 shares. Out of the 1 million, only 750 are considered to be fully paid. Those are the ones that will be used in the computation of the weighted average number 
of shares. That's what we said. So that's important. Number three, we went to bonus. We said bonus shares are shares given free of charge. And therefore, the key point was that they should not be weighted on time basis. They should not be weighted on time basis since no new money came into, no new funds came into the business. Okay. Then I told you the EPS of the previous year should be restated when it's bonus. The previous year's EPS should be restated. How? By dividing the earnings of the previous year by the number of shares in the previous year plus the bonus element in the current year. After bonus, I have discussed the stock option. And we have said for stock option, these are privilege given to who? To employees to buy shares at a price below the market price. When shares are issued to employees as a result of a stock option, you separate how many are deemed to be issued at full market price, how many are deemed to be issued as what? As bonus. How many are deemed to be issued as bonus? Once you separate, how? Divide the, market, uh, the amount received from the stock option, uh, divide the amount received from the stock option by the market price per share, which you got 750, you remember, while the issue shares were 1 million, 750 were issued at full market price, 215 were considered given as for free. So once you separate, now you use them separately. 750 came in July, were issued in July at full market price, they must be weighted. Those issued as bonus are never weighted. Because of the bonus, the EPS of the previous year should be done what? Should be restated. How? By dividing the earnings of the previous year by the number of shares in the previous year plus the bonus share element in the stock option. After that, we have talked about rights issue. We have said when shares are issued as a result of a rights issue again, some of them are deemed to be issued at full market price, some are deemed to be issued as bonus. How do you separate? To Mesema, to get the number of shares deemed to be issued at full market price, first calculate a price called what? Theoretical x right price. First calculate a price called theoretical x right price. Once you get that theoretical x right price, how do you get it? By dividing the market capitalization of the company after the rice issue by the number of shares after the rice issue. Once you get the theoretical rice price, take the amount received from the rice issue, divide that by that price which is expected. That will give you the number of shares deemed to be issued at full market price. Then automatically the balance will be the number of shares deemed to be issued as bonus. Those issued at full market price must be weighted. Those issued as bonus are never weighted. Then I've said because there is a bonus element, the EPS of the previous year should be restated. How? By multiplying, that's what we said, by multiplying the EPS of the previous year by a factor. What is that factor? The theoretical x right price, divide that by the actual come right price. After that, we have discussed the share split. When shares are issued as a result of a share split, what happens? More shares are issued but of a lower power value. Of a lower power value. Then I've said those shares issued as a result of a share split, they are not weighted. They are considered as bonus shares. They are not weighted. Therefore, again, the EPS of the previous year should be restated. How? By multiplying it by a factor, sorry, by uh, dividing the earnings of the previous year by the number of shares in the previous year plus the bonus in the current year. Then after that, we are now saying when shares are issued as a result of conversion, one key point, only one for shares issued on conversion. They are weighted on time basis. When shares are issued on conversion, they must be weighted on time basis. After that, then I've said, how do you deal with shares issued as a payment of the purchase consideration? I have said they are considered as from the date of acquisition, not from the date of the issue, as from the date of acquisition. Why? Because that the acquired entity's results will also be consolidated from the date of acquisition, but not from the date of the issue. The acquired entity's result will be consolidated as from the date of acquisition. Okay? So maybe we can stop there for now. We pick it up from there next time where we shall now continue with the second part of the topic called earnings per share. We are not through with it. We are going now to go 
into other sec items that you need to know concerning an inspire share so maybe for now we can stop there for now we can stop there we pick it up from there next time we pick it up from there next time okay we shall pick it up from there next time okay fine so see you next time unless there's a question maybe we can stop there for now bye